welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOCO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning. It's uh, December 13th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, what? Wombat. It's people! Silent Green is people! Oh, uh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're watching that movie, you're going to. Uh, on our show with us today, if you'll raise your hand when I mention your name, Doubtfire, uh, Dread Pirate, Boudreaux, and George. Hello, George. And we'll have uh, Dread Pryor here in a little bit. He stepped out for a second. Be right back. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, why well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville? Did you know that one, Bob? Right. I wanted a bell and they said they don't sell them, even though they call themselves Taco Bell. And I'm like, oh I know you have tacos, but where's the bells? Why would you call your store Taco Bell? Tacos don't even ring. What are you doing? So I have to go to Walmart instead. I got tacos and bells there. It was good. Yeah, good. Yeah. I'm just going to assume that you, you're going to watch that. <laughs> I think it's an atheist show. <laughs> uh, we'll go on. What's the deal if, with Taco if Bell? If you want to know more about the show, we'll tell you after the mid-show break. And if you'd like to interact with the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us comments or questions, or you can email them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Well, Bet, what's our topic for us today? Uh, it's a topic that our own Scott uh, Doubtfire came up with, which is, can anything be proven by logical arguments? And before we go into it, normally we would have uh, Dread Pirate do his um, invocation, but he's having some difficulties connecting to us. He'll come right back whenever he can, and we'll get into it. How about we just do a quick roundabout? How's everybody doing today? Doubtfire, how are you doing today? Actually, yeah. I, wanna, I really want to know how the music life is going for you, because I just recently found out you're a musician about a week ago. What's going on there? Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, being a musician and writing electronic music has always been a love of mine, you know, wow. since I was a kid, which was a long, 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 long time ago. Same here, so, same here, same here. And it just, you know, it just continues and continues. But um, to the point now where, you know, um, I'm collaborating with a Grammy nominated um, uh, songwriters, Audrey Martell and... Um, and uh, you know a few other writers, Mike Greenlee, and myself. I'm not a Grammy-nominated writer, but you know, they teamed up with me to try to help me get there. Yeah, <laughs> so, very good. So yeah, so that's so we released a record uh, last month called "You're the One" uh, with Deborah Magone, which is the artist. She's mainly an R&B and uh, rock indie artist, and. So we teamed up all together. She sang the lyrics that Mike Greenlee and Audrey Martells wrote, and I did the music on that. And it's released now on Bentley Records. And I'm just busy promoting it right now a little bit. So that's what's going on in the music scene. And let's plug it again at the end of the show, because I think that's really sure cool. thing. Does Thank your you. wife does your wife participate in this at all? Because uh Yeah, you know, she, uh, with really a lot good. of different um tracks that I've released over the years. Mm -hmm. with different independent record labels. She's kind of contributed a little bit to nice. a few of those tracks that really did well in the DJ record pools and things Very like cool. that. So, yeah, no doubt. Speaking of which, we have a lot of other musicians on the show. George has been, I don't know, like classical trainer and participant in music for his, I, I want to say most of your life, right? George, how That's do you That's correct. Um, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm sitting here drinking in my um, voodoo doll coffee cup. Nice. I'm drinking P. 
Pete's Coffee, halfway okay. between Knoxville and Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is from California. This is from Berkeley, California. This is the world's best coffee. Very, very cool. <laughs> and I can buy it right here in Tennessee. <laughs> so I, I am very, very happy. <laughs> you know, yeah. some, the best food, I think, comes from, if you're going to eat food in America, the best food comes from California. And people will get angry at me at that. The reason why I say that is the Garden of the the world is really the Salinas Valley in California. All we the look best forward vegetables. to your letters. The what? Well, I would just... <laughs> we look forward to your letters. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Come at me. Uh, but like until yeah. you eat like a literal like I went to high school where they picked the world's supply of more or less of strawberries and like when I had a babysitter they were like hey we just picked these strawberries you want one and it's like what this tastes completely different than the ones they freeze and then gas and carbon monoxide and ship to like different states and stuff like that no this is a fresh strawberry it sparkled on my tongue it was so spicy it like whoa this isn't a real thing it's like absolutely it's real all of them taste see like we, we have to we have to acknowledge that you come from Salinas okay and, sure, yeah, uh, John, Bein John Steinbeck country. Yeah. So uh, when you raised the question a couple of moments ago, uh, my mind jumped to the Central Valley, which ah. is the real big home of America's produce. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the corporate farms there are actually scary to me. <laughs> it's always a conspiracy. You know, really, you drive, you drive through California on Route 5. Uh-huh. And... It's at the west side of the valley, and you yeah. don't see build. You don't see buildings. No, no. and it's you kind see of broccoli. No yeah, building. you see broccoli and garlic for as far as the eye can see until it hits the beach, and then you're just like, whoa, beautiful, just beautiful. But Dirt no roads. buildings. No, you don't no need buildings, houses, baby. No. Plus, not only, not only that, but it's California. They'd fall apart if they were there. It's gonna. They're just gonna collapse. <laughs> Ludro, also a fellow musician. How you been doing? What's the music scene going like with you? <laughs> Hey, yeah, I've been I've been doing doing pretty good. Um, I've been uh, recording another song with a buddy of mine. I met through that Bad Religion page. Nice. Uh, it's another it's another cover, but we're gonna release a social distortion song. Uh, I think we're finished with. But and 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 Ty, I know you've been waiting for this. I think we're gonna put together an original. He's he's writing Whoa, a song. He's writing a song yeah. for his wife. And I listened to the song. He's I, I, I got a bass line in my head, ready to just kind of muddy that song up so we'll oh, see yeah. <laughs> so whenever i'm doing my bass lines i start off sort of apprehensive in the process like it's like yeah this is the heartbeat of it but then it's like by the time i over track it or like do some additional takes it gets way too complicated and i'm like mm -hmm. now i'm just competing with everything in the song yeah. do you yeah. ever have that go on with you and like how do you oh yeah middle ground uh i for a long time as a because when I played in Orange Whip, we were a bit more progressive than most. Mm. I, generally, I would never play the same thing the guitarist is playing. Mm. You know, we, we couldn't. We couldn't be. We couldn't be playing the same notes unless it was really. <sighs> but then, but then we'd listen to bands where the where the bass player is getting paid by the note. You know, just, <laughs> you know, and it's like, come flag. on, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so I, I kind of always use that as my barometer to like, okay. I want to get paid okay. by the note, mm. but I also don't want to play the same thing the guitar is playing. So I just go right in the middle. I love that. I love it. Okay, Larry, how you been? It's been go always good to see you, my friend. Uh, it's oh, been a good, good week. Doing well. Yeah, just staying in, staying uh, safe. How are you uh, staying entertained beyond games? I always want to know this with oh, you. Oh, Netflix or uh, Netflix. Just, uh, debating uh, theists online on Facebook. I spend a lot of time doing that. Trolling and following the online. news. There's so much news uh, nowadays yeah. that it's almost a full-time job. Just keep up with it. So I can tell you now that it's no longer as depressing. <laughs> I have been slowly opening up my door to news again, and it's still bad. Like it's yeah. still very much we're trying to sell you dog food. So keep yeah. keep that attention, baby. But I am finding like the uh, late night sh talk show comedians. I'm willing to open myself up to. Right. And it's fun yeah. to see well, Stephen Colbert. And right. like, we used Jimmy to watch Fallon. Stephen all the time until mm. just so much Trump was in the news. And we were so it's... tired of listening to him. Right. Um, my, my wife's so bad about it that I had to mute it. I had to have the remote <laughs> in my hand. And every time <laughs> that Trump came on saying something, I'd have to mute it. Uh, uh -huh. Just get to her. 
Okay, but, uh, so it's getting better. This is a random fact I know about Larry. Uh, he's part cyborg, and he has uh, basically a Bluetooth-enabled hearing aid, right? And you can control TV from just the hearing aid. Can't you just mute it from I, your ear? Can't you just be like, I don't want to listen to that? Well, Bloop. I would, but we're both watching TV at the same time. So okay. It's yeah. coming from the TV. Okay, she just needs but, to be a cyborg too, is what I'm saying. Like, yeah, hopefully we're at the end of that road for a while. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Forever, I hope. Dread Pirate, are you here? I is. Nice. Dread Pirate, how you doing? What's uh, going not on? too bad. <laughs> well, I'm actually on a, on a movie set. Um, I'll, sh I'll turn on my video and show you my locale. If you're allowed to, yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just hang on here, it's turning oh, on. Oh, it looks like a scary movie. Oh, yeah, it looks like a ship. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a pirate ship. I, I, yeah, hey, I, I would have to the turn off my background. It's the Pirates of the in Canada. But yeah, uh, it's all good. I'm, I'm actually uh, in this place called uh, Natimi Bay, mm -hmm. and it's uh, down by Vancouver, uh, Horseshoe Bay, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they're shooting a, a Disney film here. So Very cool. I'm down here doing nice. some security. Very, very cool. Very cool. So, hey, you know, it's been a while. How about you lead us with our weekly invocation? Absolutely. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, El Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing as we put up with those who cussed against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Robin. Robin. Very good. I am trying to cut back on carbs myself. <laughs> I'm getting at that age. Uh, Less so, for hey, me. Yeah, I know. I, I just had a birthday about a week ago, and I'm thinking, like, what can I do next year to make myself a little bit better? What I did last year, what I did two years ago, is said no more candy, and that's actually been incredible. Like, I just, it changed my entire taste palette, and now I can taste food for what it is rather than just, hey, sugar's here. Keep eating this. And the thing I did last week was make sure I don't go on dumb websites that just bum me out. There are websites I used to just go to just to bum myself out, like Twitter and all that stuff. I was like, nah, just stop going to those things. We're cutting them off for a year. And I just feel, whoo, I don't know what I would have done if I had kept on those websites. I would have been a completely different person. Just help Can you imagine there. the people that watch Fox all the time, Fox News? Ah, crazy. How it must affect their, their psyche. Yeah, not only that, but it's freed up a lot of my time. And I want to say something. I'm not sure if I can prove this logically, but I'm going to probably leave that question up for <laughs> Scott. But I've been thinking about, like, you know, I've had a lot of time to think, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is generally a good thing and a bad thing. But, like, what is the power of rationalizing things? And, for example, um, Scott, you brought up this really great question that I was actually touching on a while back ago. But can anything be proven by logical arguments. And my gut reaction was saying, yeah, of course you can prove a lot of things in, 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 in argumentation through logic. Like that's how logic works. But then I, I focused on that word prove and I'm like, ooh, but that is a very, very strong loaded word in terms of like logic. It's like, how do you prove something to be the case? Like objectively prove something. I can make arguments for it. I can rationalize for it. I can demonstrate something to be the case, at least temporarily, right? But how do I prove it to be the case unless if I have immaculately well-defined terms and values like math and stuff like that? And even with the idea of math, I'm still open to being wrong or, or learning new means of proving something which could ultimately undo the thing that I tried to prove initially. So all I can do is present a proof, but I can't prove something <laughs> even even as objectively as in math so it's just this weird thing of what can i prove scott what did you mean when you asked this question maybe we can touch on that for a while yeah so you know i'm a fallibilist myself you know mm. philosophically so <clears throat> i always leave open room to be wrong otherwise you know it gets kind of circular so you know just kind of watching debates this week um, between like, you know, the classic atheist versus Christian debate or theist debate. 
and you know, a Christian will make all these elaborate argumentation for God, for example, hmm. and they can all be internally consistent. You know, if this, therefore that, and on and on. And the atheist can come back and refute it by saying, no, well, maybe multiverse is the thing that we're trying to promote versus God. So if multiverse, then therefore this, this, and that. And it seems like um, the flaw in that whole thing is, is would be to actually think that, you know, that argument proves your case, right? Like these Gnostic atheists will say, well, it's not God. The real, um, um, you know, metaphysical truth here is multiverses or something like that. Um, but that's just metaphysics. Again, that's just as metaphysical as saying God is the is the uh, con- non-contingent thing that everything hinges on. So both parties are making really the same argument, and pretty much but they can't demonstrate the thing that they're pointing to. Like the theist can't really point and say, hey, here's God right here. If you just lift this stone up, you're going to see God, and it's well-defined. It doesn't happen like that. It's just an argument, no matter how consistent it is. So what would you do? Sorry for interrupting, but how would you handle the claim where a uh, Christian would say, well, when you lift up that rock— underneath it is God and the rock is God and everything around that rock and that thing that you're seeing is God. How do you respond to that? Right. So that would be, for me, it would be a subjective sort of value that you've kind of, you've, you've kind of defined things into existence. So you could say the universe is the universe, or you could say the universe is God. You're just kind of relabeling and playing a language game and it may have utility for you. And it may be something that's um that works for you in your life but i don't think that you can objectively say that this is the absolute truth of the matter um any more than someone who says that it isn't the case that the universe has got it's like it just depends on a perspective it's a philosophical argument it's not really something uh you know science works to sort of tell you how the universe you know works kind of describe how things work in reality but it doesn't, it's not set up to tell you why necessarily things are the way they are or have some sort of intrinsic essence of truth about things mm. um, necessarily. Mm. So it leaves it to metaphysics. That's, a, it, it, that, that's why we have metaphysics and philosophy, which is really great if you want. I mean, some things can be shown to logically be inconsistent. And in that case, your argumentation fails and it can't be true. Like a, we had a show that, you know, not long ago about logical arguments, you know. Larry, what do you think? Well, I hear this uh, a lot of times in my little ask and atheist tables when I'm out talking to people in public. It's a big, um, it's a mid sized table. Don't, yeah, don't, they... don't, don't belittle yourself. It's a mid sized table. <laughs> it's a pretty big it's table. It's a nice table. table. Yeah, yeah. The chairs are small. <laughs> the yeah. table's okay. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, they seem to want it both ways. They, they want the, their God to be the God of the Bible, which has intention. He has particular uh, things that he wants you to do. He's a person that, that has presented himself and wrestled with humans, uh, brought plagues, done all kinds of things interpersonally, and cares very much about the outcome of certain inter- interactions. And the universe which doesn't care anything about that. I mean, if they're saying the, their God is the, is the universe, then it's not the God of the Bible or the mm-hmm. Quran or mm-hmm. the God of the, the Hindu gods, any of that, because they have agencies and particular things they want, theoretically. Um, you know, and they're, they're just trying to gloss it over like they do when they point to the, the God on the money and say, see, that's my God. Well, Hindus point to that too and say that's my God, and Muslims point to it, and and pantheists point to it and say, "See, that's the universe." Sure, sure, uh, sure. They all say they believe in God, but it's all a different thing. Sure, you know the way how I see it, and I'm. And let me know if this isn't in too simple terms, but if three people, if one, two, three, four, five, if six people sit in a room and all come to the conclusion logically that I'm wearing a red shirt right now, it doesn't make it true that I'm wearing a red shirt. 
Like they could be a logical argument that I am wearing a red shirt. Could be the probably, lighting. Yeah, you can finesse it. You can make the lighting mm-hmm. somehow something. You can show. Mm-hmm. You can logically come up with an, a, a means of of satisfying all six people in that room, but it doesn't necessarily make it the case. And likewise, you could have a billion people say, logically, we've come up with an argument to prove that a God exists, but there's still the effort to demonstrate the claim. And what I found with a lot of people is they will supplant the demonstration step with just more claims. And that's really unfortunate because that is basically conflation between, uh, claims and evidence for F, the claims yeah, and, and so when, and when some, they point when they point to the bible as confirmation of their claims exactly they're they're just pointing to the claim what they're it's, doing is repeating it the bible is more the claim claims. and yeah. so when someone says hey i'm looking under this rock to see if god's there it's like well the rock's god and everything underneath the rock is god it's like that's just more claims i needed to supplant that with better evidence dread what do you think i uh, was just thinking that um a lot of people use anecdote as evidence in support yeah. of a claim. Mm-hmm. He says it, um, antidote in Canada. They don't say antidote, how you're supposed to say no, it. It's antidote. antidote with a it's hard anecdote. S. It's antidote. Come on, America, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I was just actually, I just recently had a conversation with uh, somebody about dowsing. And, uh, you know, he says, well, I don't know how it works, but I know it works. And I know lots of people (laughs) who do it. And that's how they, you know, they have fine water and, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, you know, that's not quite the same thing as setting up a tent like Richard Dawkins did and have a bunch of, uh, you know, like a double blind, essentially, uh, a setup or you know some of the containers have water and some have sand and yeah could you take would you your mind defining, rods of choice and figure yeah, it you, out and for anyone you know, who didn't grow no, up with looney tunes could you describe what dowsing is for just potentially oh, our younger audience out there well dowsing or witching as it's also known is uh the, the practice of using uh, rods uh held in the hands that uh, you search for water basically underground um, when the rods cross that is supposedly where water is directly beneath you. And so it's a, it's a magical way of finding water. Yeah. It typically doesn't work either, though people have gotten It doesn't work any more than random. And that's what Richard (laughs) Richard Dawkins had pretty well demonstrated. So um, when it comes to, uh, you know, this course coming up, I'm going to actually have that as a demonstration in City Park. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's such a great exercise. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You you could even just make it like Dixie Cups with jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> and people will be like, I randomly found some jelly beans. Like, great. You're about 50% yeah. chance of finding jelly beans. And exactly. Sticks work. That, that's actually a good idea. It, it saves you a trip. Uh, yeah. Boudreaux. <laughs> I'd love to get you away on this. The original question is, can anything be proven by logical arguments? What do you think is the power versus the limitation of a logical argument? And can it actually be used to prove anything? Well, uh, I think the power is, is persuasion, right? Because you're, if you make a logical argument and somebody's tracking it, you know, in their, you know, we're, we're translating the words you're saying into, uh, into thoughts. And, uh, if, if it's a compelling argument and it, and it tracks and it makes sense, you know, you can, you can convince somebody that's the power I think. And that's, that's the beauty of it. But the, the downside is I, I like your example of if all of us said you're wearing a red shirt, um, you know, that doesn't prove, you know, consensus is, is a beautiful thing in science, but it has to be demonstrable. So I, I guess I wanted to follow up with your analogy and say, okay, all of us claim or, or, or express that you're wearing a red shirt. Mm. Well, let's cut a little piece of your shirt exactly. off or two pieces okay. and let's take one of them and let's put it on what, what real people think is red. Yeah. And let's take another red. one mm-hmm. right on, on a, another color sheet. This guy's a doctor. Then, you can tell. Yeah. And, then, and then you just say, all right, you have, you have three seconds to find the, the piece of cloth. Here's a red shirt, and here's a uh, you have one on a red blanket, one on a black blanket. I mm. guarantee people are going to find it faster uh, on the red blanket because mm. it's a black shirt. And so, 
that yeah to me that's hey, the best look at him proof. look at him fitting up this whole scientific experience it's just like he could have just been like <laughs> just hold up the piece of paper and be like is this right or black to a stranger but it's like no let's let's yeah. do this objectively and and let's have yeah. more than an n of one and i love it yes. i love it yes. that's a good test that's a good test go. yeah so uh but what can can anything be proven i guess i'll just ask you this flatly boudreau i mean I, what's the closest I, thing I, that I like, can be proven with logical arguments what's the close what's the best thing that we can prove i mean i i i, I guess uh i like your your point that um you can make a proof hmm. but you know and you can get you know basically you it's like an asymptote you get as close as you can to that line hmm. uh, you can't fully yeah, absolutely 100 percent prove it but i mean if you do something a thousand times in a row and it never fails hmm. i mean isn't that are you confident enough? I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? Yeah. I'm gonna, so, I'll, yeah. I'll throw this question out to the group. Uh, I think the closest thing we can prove with a logical argument, and I got this from a street epistemology chat I had with two girls, their name were Katie and Emma, uh, is that the only thing you can be certain about is that you can't be certain about anything. <laughs> and I feel like you can prove that <laughs> logic. That's Socrates, right? I, I I don't want to credit those two girls because that's exactly as they put it, and I think <laughs> certainty. Is I mean, I think certainty I think... is overrated. I like certainty, but I don't think absolute. I think absolute certainty is impossible. Right. But I can't even be certain about that. I just feel like the only thing I can be certain about is that I can't be certain about anything, and I like that as a as a both a motto. Dread, what do you think? Well, I was just going to say that uh, when you say proving anything by logical argument. Hmm. Um, so a sound logical argument, of course, is if the premises of an argument are true, mm. the conclusion must be true. Mm. And that is a sound logical argument. So sometimes you can have sound premises, like you can have true premises and your conclusion is true, but the whole argument is absurd. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, you can prove something absurd is true b by way of logical argument, but it being so ridiculous, it's not, a, you know, it's not true in our universe sort of thing. And I just want to I just want to highlight that when we say true in the context of logical arguments, what we really mean is valid, like it's mm. non contradictory and it's a valid, coherent statement. <laughs> we don't necessarily mean that it's demonstrably the case or that it's objectively shown to be actual or reality. And right. those and there's there's that barring of words from different fields of science that a lot of exactly. people get tripped up on. They're like, hey. Yeah. God is good and God and good exists. Therefore, God exists. It's like, ooh, 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 ooh. We took a couple of steps too far here. Because, look, well, logically, it's true. If these premises are true. Logically, like, that, that's a valid argument. Yeah. <laughs> it's a valid argument. Doesn't mean that's mean that it's true. That's right. Doesn't and make so it we true. Have, we have to make sure we know what words we mean when we say them. Scott, I, saw, I think I saw your hand raised. Oh, actually. Yeah, so, and mm -hmm. then we'll go to George because George hasn't said anything. Yeah, go, yeah. go for it. Um, I was just going to say that. Um, like for me, the, the Kalam cosmological argument. You're going to have to define what that means. We're not all nerds here. What's going yep. on? So you say everything that began to exist had a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe had a cause. And a lot of people will say, well, that proves God. Hmm. But all your all the argument really is proving is that the universe had a cause. So then there's like this extra claim, like you were talking about that, oh, oh, this cause has to be God. Well, now that's a separate argument, you know, and then you're talking about which God are we talking about too? True. So that's kind of where we're going. So, but what I would say is that um, the reason why arguments don't work and why science <laughs> is a better way to um, prove things, at least to some degree of certainty, is um, I think the best way is uh, predictions. Um, if you can do testable, repeatable predictions, then that's a good way to solidify an argument, to say, well, um, you know, uh, if I drop this pin, if I, if I let go of this pin, it's going to fall, boom. And I do that all the time. Well, I've just demonstrated that argument that, you know, gravity works or whatever my argument might, might be in that case. So okay. that's just what I, what I would say. Is it, you know, I feel, and it depends I, on definitions too. So true. I feel like I've been a terrible host. I want to hear from George before we go to our break. Uh, George, do you think anything can be proven by logical arguments? Well, in my mind, listening to everybody talking here, um, 
the the question in my mind is what's the context of arg of the arguing mm. so in other words who am i arguing with and what is their reality system if the i'm going seat. to get through to that person i have to get through to them <laughs> them are in not mine so you know here i am in the middle of the bible belt hmm. and um i'm living in a country which has gone very far to the fascist side and i think that i'm living in a in a society that is largely delusional and um you know how do we how do we convey reality to these folks how do we do the heavy lifting? Mm. And I think that if we are going to convince anybody of anything, we have to do it in a way that makes sense to them in their echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be a big job. I I would, that's not gonna be easy. I agree that common ground's good, but truth, and we can talk about this more when we come back. Truth is truth. <laughs> truth is truth. You don't have to put, you don't have to put truth plus Definitely. a layer of sugar on the top is just, obscure truth. Larry, how about we get into this more when we come back from the break? You can take us out. Sure. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. I said lay down Take a breath You got to slow down What else is there to say? You feel like you're messing up you're not just the only one Don't you know it's a big thing You waste time with all this hating What else is there to say? They'll feel like you're messing up Let's try it another way Take a break, don't you pass it up Don't you know, take a deep in some way <laughs> I really appreciate having you here and you're supportive yeah, it's really cool welcome to the second half of the digital free thought radio hour I'm Dr. Uh, on the show with us today we have uh, 
George, Boudreau, uh, Doubtfire, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, uh, Wombat, and myself. Hey. And where do we want to pick up, Wombat? So we were going over the menu items of Taco Bell for, since for the last half hour. And the last time I was at Taco Bell, I was like, okay, so you guys only have bells. What do you guys have? You have the Gordita Crunch, and it was like three twenty nine. I'm like, that's a lot expensive. It only used to be a dollar. And then it's like the Double Decker is like one fifty nine now. And I'm like, oh, that's so expensive now. But you guys don't have the thing I'm looking for. Where is it? Where is it? The love. Where is the love? <laughs> Where is the love? The love. Where is the love? love. The love. Listener, listener love. The love. Yeah. Okay, so guys, last week's episode, this is listener feedback section, by the way. Feel free to leave a comment and anywhere we'll track it down and we'll put it into the next week's show. Uh, we got some comments from last week, which was about critical thinking being a crime in Nigeria. And we had John Richards on and he talked about how thought crime is an actual thing in Nigeria and people are being John Richards uh, represents the Atheist Alliance International Corporate exactly. Fund Group. And they do a lot of international work, obviously, especially about supporting atheists in other places where it's not okay to be an atheist. Or and trying still... to get them out of those places. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> and so uh, he was talking about how people are being wrongly arrested or disappearing from, you know, just off the streets because mm -hmm. of their outspokenness about critical thinking, just critical thinking. And so we had some really good comments on. Loma said, thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I look forward to seeing John again on the show. And I do too. In fact, he was on just this morning and uh, I'm sure he'll be back later on. Um, beautiful family, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Anthony Magna Bosco left a comment on the show. He says, love the show. It chills me out. Thank you, fellas. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, moving on. Carlos says, hey, is this podcast on iTunes or Spotify? Uh, Larry, I'll leave that up to you. Do you know if we're on well, iTunes or I Spotify? Think it's on, I know it's on iTunes. I'm not sure about Spotify, but I would I would think so. It's we're definitely well on iTunes, and we're definitely on Stitcher as well. What's the name of our podcast, uh, in case anyone can know? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Digital Free Thought Radio just, Hour. Right. And then, you know, uh, you can also watch these on YouTube. Larry, you have your own channel. I have my own mm -hmm. channel. Dread will post this stuff. He'll live stream it on Twitch. It, we are eventually going to coalesce this to, like, more streamlined things. But Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is, like, yeah. one of the best places you can find all of our previous episodes. And we go back we're, how many years? We're not on Patreon yet, though. <laughs> we're not on Patreon Might want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, we got a comment from Trumpet Party. Now, let me tell you something about this guy. So, you guys remember when I did uh, SE at Politicon and I, I was talking to a guy that looked like Trump? Mm -hmm. that, that was Trumpet Party. And it was this Trump impersonator who was very, very good. He'll go to your party and he'll Trump it. He'll make it more like Trump. But he is, <laughs> he is, he's clearly on the side of good, <laughs> but his impression's so spot on. And he's a very, very witty guy. I think it was the funniest conversation I ever had with anyone where the things you were saying was like, that's so spot on. But I know, I can see the glimmer in your eye where it's like, I know I'm blowing the character. Plus on his YouTube channel, he plays um, piano and he'll play it as if he was Trump and he'll do Rocket Man and he'll, <laughs> he'll make fun of himself. And since um, Trump's currently being kicked out, uh, he's been doing a series of videos from where uh, he's on the pulpit and he's like, you know, there were some good times. There were some bad times, a lot of bad times. Best of times, baby. I don't know. <laughs> Just really good stuff. I can't do it. I can't do it. But yeah, he's doing really good. Trumpet Party says, your voice is as smooth as... Uh, your voice is as smooth as a 20-year-old whiskey. Not that I drink. That's what his comment was. Anyway, <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Guys, leave a comment if you want to know uh, more about how to get your voices on the show. We'd love to have you on the show in the future as well. How about we get back to the main point of the show? We were talking about, can anything be proven by logical arguments? George, you had an interesting comment where you had said, if only we can reach out to the people who are so lost in their own echo chambers and try to pull them back onto the side of rationality and like, what's a good way of doing that. And I love that quite, I love that ask. And well, so I said, I was, I was um, emphasizing that in order to do that, I think that we have to come to them through their own color filter in other words, through their own system of logic. 
we all have it. We all have our own filtration system through which we view the world, I think. Each one of us has a different one. Sure. You know, or a different gestalt that we live within. And so that I really think that uh, considering that um, in this age of the internet and an explosion of, let's say, digital media in general, that um, there are multiple channels of delusion out there that are agreeing with themselves, with each other. And if we want to get through to somebody, how do we penetrate that fog? Cool. Um, I'll throw this out to the group. I think this would be a really good roundtable discussion. And I don't want to color it first. How about we throw it out to Boudreaux first? Boudreaux, what's the best way to reach out to these people in the echo chamber? Well, and, uh, yeah, yeah, go for go it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I, I've thought about this a lot, too, especially after hearing a podcast on the uh, brainwashing of my dad, that whole mm. idea of Fox News kind of infiltrating, you know, guys about my dad's age and, and, and such. But it, I, I think, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I think the answer is we have to kind of expose ourselves to, to other media sources. You know, we talk about mainstream media being, you know, just the, just the left. Well, I think there's so much media now and there's so much, you know, Fox news and, and, and others. I, I, do, do you, could you leave Fox news on for an hour and just listen to it? And wow. I, I know you're shaking your heads, but if we do that, you know, maybe that's how we can come up with better arguments to, to discuss. Them. Can I tell you, I, there's a guy at my gym who shows up every hour that I'm there. And so I've had to change my scheduled hours because this guy will go in the gym, maybe about five minutes before I do and literally turn every television, uh -oh. every single television. Yeah. I don't know why, but every single every. television we switch to Fox and he'll play them yep. all out loud. And even though his treadmill has a TV screen on it that you can just yep. Bluetooth connect or put a, yep. plug his headphones in, he has has to hear Fox News on literally every channel around him, yep. and I and I walk in the room. And I'm like, oh, it's Fox News, and everyone's like, yeah, I can, I'm watching it. But uh, if you need to change it, I'm like, it's like, no, it's yep. all good. I'll just walk to another room and work out there. Got the, but, the same guy at mine. It's the well, most Wombat, annoying. Wombat. It's the most painful thing to listen to. He wants you to watch the Fox. There you go, and I'm not yep. doing it. And there's nobody in that room. That's Maybe what he's doing. Thing. That. That's his have social you, distancing have you, strategy. Wombat, Whoa. have you ever thought about finding out? If you if the the default pin for those those cable things, I was things. looking at that this morning. Yes, <laughs> and then blocking the channel. I was I was literally there this morning. It was like one one one, and I was like, you right. know what? This may not be good for me. Larry, it sounded like you were about to say something. What's up? I was just wondering what the uh, workout place was or what commercial. Uh, it's where you're it's about. a. It's the nearby gym where I where I where my place of residence is. But we and individual rooms street. have certain workout. How many machines to a room? Uh, there's one very very large room where all the ellipticals and all that stuff are that have TVs lining all around the walls. But that's and not the one he does. That's the one he does, and it's, it's like a very large one. Boom, boom, yeah, boom, 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 boom. There's one universal remote control that controls everything, and it's just like, what are you doing, dude? But you know, as rude as that is, it's like it is painful to listen to Fox News. Yes, it's oh, very so it's painful, horrible. also to listen to pop country music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Try to working out to that, it's like, oh my god. Yeah. There was a, I love Hootie and the Blowfish. I love Darius Rucker, but he had his new song called. <sighs> moonshine and beer or something like that or like hell hand hand handshakes and whiskey or so some two non-offensive things combined together that he just sings for about for three exactly three minutes and 30 seconds in cgfg cgfg just the most mundane song possible he's auto-tuned the chorus comes right when you think it is the title of the song comes immediately after the chorus you're just like oh this is so formulaic what's going on i cannot listen to this anymore <laughs> anyway that's the stuff that drives me nuts fox news <laughs> is that Fox News is that it's just like I know I'm going to listen to something crazy if I if, if if I walk in the gym and it's Fox News everywhere and it is and it's always something crazy. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do that, Boudreaux. But I, 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 I'm I don't think I can either. I'm just I'm saying maybe that's I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Scott, what do I you think? I try to do that. Yeah, I, I actually do that. I actually um, to things that I don't agree with. I try to make myself like just 
listen to them. Like I'll go, like, I'm not a Christian and I, mm. and I debate and talk with Christians all the time. Mm. And what I'll do is I'll go watch, you know, church programs for a whole hour. Like just listen to different. There's an update. Yeah. Listen to the <laughs> apologetics, listen to all these things politically. I'll go listen to Fox news or, you know, whatever, uh, just, just to kind of understand where they're coming from. Because if I don't really understand the argument, then how can I make an argument against it? If I don't really understand, if I can't get into their frame of reference, then I don't know what we're arguing about. I'm only right. spewing out my own stuff and I'm not really connecting with them, you know? Mm, yeah. Tread, what do you think? Yes. Um, often I, I'm more interested in how people who watch those kinds of news feeds uh, interpret what they see and regurgitate it, how they filter it and how it comes out once it's exactly. passed through the filters of their own heads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's, and because, and because, you know, in dealing with people, that's really what you're trying to respond to is yeah. not to the news. It's to how people interpret the news that they, they watch. As a, as a quick example of that, I remember when um, Kaepernick, the NFL quarterback who uh, was kneeling during the uh, um, Star Spangled Banner, whatever they try to do to force patriotism in the NFL, <laughs> he, he was kneeling as a response to like, hey, you know, like we're all millionaires here, but I have, I represent a community that's very, very marginalized. And while you guys are all happy, like there's literally blood on our streets and it's undue. And I don't think that's cool. And I'm just going to kneel to show some respect to the people who don't have the chance to to say that and like say like everything's fine and so when that first happened media went nuts media went complete nuts and i remember hearing on npr not npr uh some conservative um news that i set my 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 radio to so my cat will have some company and then i remember driving to work and there was like the same news thing saying the same sound bite where it's like i can't believe he's doing this against our country and then i go to work and i had a boss from arkansas who like was in the cafeteria who wanted to talk to me about nfl for some reason because i'm the only black guy there and it's just like hey i can't believe he's doing this to our country i'm like that is word for word the sound bite that i heard for the like the last two days and in my head it's like wow did you come up with that idea entirely on your own I didn't say it because I didn't want to get fired. I'm glad I don't work there anymore. But mm, mm, mm. it is amazing how people just absorb things and think, I came up with this idea. Despite yeah, the fact yeah. that it was phone spoon fed to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing yeah, that we live in. You know, we, we all have to be on guard against that. Like, we do. We all have to, you know, try to be as conscious as we can about what we believe and why. Yeah. And be able to articulate it in our own words because that would demonstrate to ourselves, anyways, that this is my thought. I'm, I'm not being brainwashed into some stuff. So sure. I think it's helpful to, to really examine your own beliefs and why. Yeah. And, and a big thing is to check your own biases, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Larry, I want to weigh in on you. Uh, how do you feel about the nature of, do you feel like, do you feel like we need to modify truth? It's packaging in order to make it more palatable to people who are lost in their own echo chamber? Gosh, I don't know. The only way that I really interact with people who might be in their own echo chamber mm. is with, you know, when I go into public, I might ask an atheist tables, but mm. on Facebook, I will go to uh, some Christian apologetics site and um, talk to them there, uh, challenge their assumptions, uh, give them something to think about, uh, post memes. Of course, I, I make a lot of memes, but um, I don't generally go to uh, extreme right Facebook pages, uh, mm -hmm. conspiracy theory uh, Facebook pages. But the, the, what you do is just engage them, uh, give them alternate views, uh, give them uh, reasons why you think the way you do that, that's opposite of the way they do. And just hope for the best because, I mean, it all depends on how entrenched they are, how resistant to change they are, and what might work with them, which you really can't find out until you talk to them. But yeah. I think street epistemology is an, is an extremely good way of, uh, or so Socratic examination, Socratic examination is, a, is an extremely good tool mm -hmm. to that end. But as far as truth, um, I think that the religious right is used 
truth with a capital T pointing to the Bible for so long, it's really poisoned that well. I think we need to stay away from uh, claiming we have truth hmm. and really just like talk that. to them about um, the reality filter that they have and why it may be flawed. Okay. You know, when I take a step back, I sort of remember seeing something on YouTube a while back ago, maybe this was several years ago, but it was a class in Jamaica and it was a bunch of black students arguing with the teacher that the science that he was purporting or teaching of the curriculum wasn't black science because there wasn't like any discussion on like the culture of like voodoo or mysticism that they were more familiar with there. And it didn't have like any black representatives of the people that they were teaching there. And in my head, it was like, what an unfortunate thing that, you know, we, it, the filter isn't necessarily on the people who are wrong or aren't being rational. The filter could literally be on science itself. And what I mean by that is we're not opening up the doors to how everyone's interacting with science and improving science together. And that might be the gateway to get people in their echo chambers to come to our side. If you show, for example, a, a backcountry guy who's like, hey, listen, I have to figure out how to make moonshine better. The methanol levels are too high. It was making people blind. And I found this really cool way of distillation that actually resolved all these problems. And I'm just a backwoods boy and I'm doing the best I can. It's like, this could be the spokesperson that can get a guy who has that same kind of mentality. Maybe they even vote for the same person when it comes to election to say, hey, this guy thinks like me and helps helped out in science. He's not just some liberal guy in a, in a suit and a bow tie who's looking down on me. Like he's, he, we probably hang out at the same church. He's a cool dude and he's a scientist. I'm gonna figure out what this guy is like because he's my access route to this wonderful world of science and critical thought. And I'm thinking we're so, when you look at who we teach in science today, it's typically of a very small window of, you know, unfortunately just, you know, powerful white men, like for the most part. And like, when you say like, who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison immediately. When really mm -hmm. it was Larry Lattimore who came up with the filament for carbon fibers. And the reason why he came up with it is because it was very hard if you're poor or just recently weren't a slave anymore to keep your home lit. So what's an affordable way to do that, aside from just having candles, right? Which were also expensive back in the days. So like, hey, I found this carbon filament. When you apply electrical voltage to it, it lights up. And Thomas Edison was like, hey, I'm gonna take that and make something called an incandescent lamp, which I stole parts and bits from, from like 40 other engineers. And I'm just gonna slap my name yeah. on it. And now I'm gonna be the famous guy. And make sure you put my name in the newspapers and make sure I buy all the patents and boom, 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 boom. And this right. guy's just going on and on. When there's like a whole community of many different kinds of people from all around the world, women and men, immigrants, all sorts of different people who contribute to science. It's not just that one guy at the top, it's everyone who, who made this wellspring of ideas. And I feel like if we just shine more light there, that's how we get people who, who might be lost in their own idea of like, science isn't for me because it doesn't represent me. Science isn't for me because it doesn't yeah. look like me. To get them on board and be like, no, science was built on contributions of people who are just like you, who think like you, who look like you, and you have means to contribute to this as well. And that's why it's so important that you learn how valuable science is now, because we can mm -hmm. all benefit from it, because you are a part of this as well. It's not just a them thing. It's an our that's thing. We all mutually benefit from this. I think you, that's you know how to do it. There's a really, really neat uh, NPR hidden brain episode called uh, People Like Me, hmm. where it gets into that exactly, where they, they found if your doctor you know, looks like you, same ethnicity, you're more likely to listen to what they say. Mm. And um, it, it, it goes pretty deep into, into just how we trust, you know, you just, you trust things more when it comes from your cultures. So yeah, you, yeah, I think you're onto something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I read a book a few months ago about the psychology of uh, why people claim to believe what they believe and you, and they found out that most people don't really come to their conclusions for the reasons they think they do. Mm. That's kind of an afterthought. But really what moves people to believe certain things and behave certain ways is feelings, like emotional. It's all emotional. So exactly. people reject science because it seems like a white thing or it seems like, you know, something else or they're not of our political party. You know, only liberals or only 
Democrats yes. like science. So we yes. have to hate science. Cause so we have to hate science. It's like, you, don't you know what I mean? There's so yeah. many good things here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dread, and I, I think that's where we're at. I think that's where, where we really are at now. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. It's like, I yeah. think it's a joke, but this is but the there's reality. Hope. There's hope because anyone can know this information. It's all available to us on the internet. And it's not like it's a hard thing to find people who contributed to science who who are black or or Mexican or women, you can just type and look on YouTube, great female scientists or great black scientists, etc., and have a, a deck of cards in your hand that if you find someone who's struggling or if you find someone who's like, I bet I could I can make this person appreciate what I'm trying to say more if I can just present these names and contributions uh, to them. Like that's an avenue that can be used, particularly if you're, if you're an educator, I highly recommend it. And what we really need to do is just adjust our curriculum so that we, we reflect that this is a melting pot community effort. Science is a community effort, not just uh, uh, an American thing or, uh, <laughs> or a man thing. It's, it's an everybody thing and it benefits everyone. Dred, why don't you give us uh, some final words and where can we find your stuff at? Well, I, I mean, of course, I haven't done a lot in a while, so my YouTube channel is um, a bit barren of late, but um, it can be found on Mind Pirate, P-Y-R-A-T-E. Uh, I'm also, for January 28th is the date, the rollout date for my, uh, uh, my uh, course in critical thinking, uh, Skepticism 101, Adventures in Critical Thinking. So nice. uh, once that is all firmed up and we get more than two people signed up to attend it, uh, <laughs> I'll share the link. You're going to be then, surprised. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I have, you never know. And, and like I said, I have I'm three in my for, class right now. I'm going to be looking for a couple of uh, you folks there to help out if uh, if you're interested. Absolutely. I know, I know Ty and uh, Larry have both said uh, they're interested. So um, yeah, that's what's going on so far. Boudreaux raised his finger too. I think he might be. Yeah. Hey, put, right put, on put me down for a class on free will, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm too loud. But yeah. There you be go. prepared. Be prepared to <laughs> for a multi-tiered Star Wars and naval discussion. Yeah. Uh, Boudreaux, <laughs> where can we uh, find your stuff at, or what would we be interested in? So you you're, you're gonna. I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna share another link when we get our our cover song done. But I'm really excited to to actually try an original song again. It's been a long time. So I will. Yeah, it has been. I will post that to the group and and hope you guys share it, play it on the show. Yeah. Uh, the guy the guy I'm collaborating with. He's a Bad Religion fan, so he's obviously one of us. So maybe I'll try to get him on the program sometime too. Very cool. Very cool. I, very cool. <laughs> very cool. Uh, Scott, I asked you to plug again at the end of the show. Where can we find your stuff at? And Give us that yeah. for me, Ann. Yeah, so the best place to go if you want to check out, check me out, is dubshine.bandcamp.com. Then you can nice. listen to a whole library of stuff I've got, and you can support me and download some music if you like it. So, yeah, certainly, yeah. Dubshine. Your stuff is like a throwback to old electric disco trope. I feel like mm -hmm. is like, if you, if quick thing, if you ever played Dance Dance Revolution, this is it. This is like the comeback for it. It's just like, oh, this is Naoka. This is Bimani. This is like, oh, this is, these are all these soundtracks that I grew up on, like in literal yep. high school time. It was great. Yeah. Uh, George, you're stretching out your arms. You're looking like you're uh, about to transcend into the, at the. the I, I feel show. wonderful. I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's feeling good. Is there anything that you recommend that we check out by next week? Is there anything that you think we should look into? Absolutely not. Nothing. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Not today. I'll, I'll think of something in 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Larry, go on ahead and, uh, you, oh, my phone went off. So I'm, uh, let's <laughs> chat. You can find me on YouTube. Feel free to leave a comment. We'll talk to him on the next week's show. And listen, it's holidays. It's been a long year. Take your time. Relax. It's been uh, a wonderful road that got us to this moment and you survived and you're here. And I think that's important. But if you have a chance to check it out, go on YouTube and figure out some uh, scientists that are, you know, from minority groups that you might may not have been aware of and find out what their contributions are. You might find out like the things that you love are actually an assemblage of many different people from all around the world. They it's usually amazing are. to figure it out. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. the case. Larry, why don't you take us out? Hey, well, you can find mine, my stuff at digitalfreethought.com. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button when you go there. Uh, you'll find our radio show archives, atheist songs, many uh, articles on the subject. 
Um, my book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them in future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religion, having emotional problems, psychological problems, uh, or any other kind, you can always find some help at recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified when new episodes are posted. And this has been another episode of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it, enjoy your life, and we'll see you here on WOZO Radio next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Have a good life and say bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>